Imagine transforming the world of education, not just through leading, but also through inspiring. We know in today's times, things move at a lightning speed. So it's always important to increase our knowledge and skills and capacity. So in today's episode, we're gonna give you three strategies that are gonna help you build your educational leadership capacity. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, get ready to take some notes, because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational and your education leadership journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any of our newest episodes or any of our latest content. Leaders need to lead, first and foremost. We must lead as leaders. But in order to do that, we have got to always be focused on increasing our skills, our knowledge, and our capacity. Our staff, our communities, the students that we lead, the teams that we lead, they need our inspiration, they need our energy, and they need our ability to make their environment and their world a better place. So as leaders, we have to always be looking at how do we sharpen our skills, how do we develop our abilities, and how do we have the, the resources and the assets available to us as leaders to be able to effectively problem solve, effectively engage, effectively build a better organization. So in today's episode, we're gonna share three strategies that are gonna help you be able to build your skills and your knowledge and capacity as an educational leader. So let's get started with strategy number one. Educational leadership skills strategy number one. Always look to be seeking new knowledge. Far too often, uh, we as leaders don't keep ourselves current. Uh, we get a little bit complacent. We get a little bit too comfortable uh, with the job, with the skills, with what we think is necessary for us to be effective in the role. And I would challenge you to not take that approach. I would challenge you to be especially in the world of educational leadership, is you need to always remain the lead learner, meaning you're reading, you're researching, you're seeking out new bits of information. What is the latest research? What are the latest books? What are the latest articles? What are the latest podcasts? Our thirst for new information, our thirst for new knowledge, where we can then take and synthesize that information and go back to our teams, go back to our organizations, and come up with new initiatives, new programs, new policies, new procedures that are again going to increase and enhance the educational experience as well as the work experience for all the people that are within the organization that we lead. If we're not the lead learner, how do we model, how do we demonstrate just how important it is to seek out and develop our skills and build our knowledge and build our capacity and to build our expertise? So the very first thing I'm going to stress to you as you're trying to build and develop your educational leadership skills is to remain the lead learner and to seek out new knowledge constantly. Develop a routine. Find a time, a space, and a place where you learn new things, where you listen to new things, where you read new reports, where you delve into getting more knowledge, information, and data that will help inform your next best strategy, your next best idea, the thing that you're gonna come in and utilize to more effectively lead your organization. Seek out that new knowledge. Be the lead learner and be the model that all of your staff and your school community and the people that you lead can look up to and gain inspiration from. So strategy number one, as you develop your educational leadership skills, is to seek new knowledge. Educational leadership strategy number two, making a plan for growth. It, it's critically important to be intentional. As leaders, we have to have plans and we have to have intentionality. And then we have to be able to use those plans to grow our skills and our knowledge. So developing your plan is about what are your professional learning opportunities that you wanna have? What are the experiences where are the places that you need to go? Who are the mentors that you need to tap into? 
What is the network that you need to surround yourself with? But this is how you make your plan for growth is to come up with three to five strategies of things that you want to know, learn and grow over the next year. And then immerse yourself in that. But then the plan for growth is to really articulate and intentionally map out how will you get there? Because a plan is only as good as the ability for you to execute it. So again, as you lay out the plan and you have the idea of what you want to talk about, what you want to learn, what you want to be exposed to, then you want to start to think about who are the best three to five people that I need to interact with? Who do I, who's in my circle already that I know has the expertise and the knowledge to be able to assist me as I'm developing and executing this growth plan? Who are two to three people that are not in my circle now that I want to expand my circle to to reach out to them and begin that relationship, begin that connection because they have some knowledge and some expertise that you'd like to tap into? Where are the locations and the spaces and the events that I want to plant myself within that I want to be able to experience because I will be able to gain some experience and some knowledge? So what are those conferences? What are those events? What are those activities? Then additionally, where are the, the most important sets of resources that will then help me lay out what those plans are? Do I need new tools? Do I need new equipment? Do I need new frameworks? Do I need new and better information that will help me then be able to execute on these three to five goals? But developing that plan is critically important because my leadership and my leadership development is tied to me being crystal clear on what are the two to three things that I'm going to focus on for the rest of this year. If I have those as my North Star, the inevitable whirlwind that comes through leadership where there will be urgent things, there will be important things, and those urgent and important things won't necessarily align with my key goals. But if I've developed that plan, it is written. It is in a place and a space that is visible to me that I can refer to continuously as my North Star. I never let that plan get away from me. And the more, the more thorough and the more specific I am about how I'm going to leverage and accomplish those goals by, again, who are the people, who are the places, and who are the things that I need exposure to to be able to make those three to five strategic areas of growth and, and, and influence, that's how I'm going to get there. It's through the intentional work. It's through the intentional development of the plan. So as you develop your own educational leadership strategies, how are you building an intentional plan? Where are the spaces and the places that you want exposure to? Share some of that with me in the comments below. What is the specific plan? What are the specific two to three strategies that you want to develop for yourself? And then not only do you have that those two to three strategies, but you also then say, all right, who are the people, the places, and the things I need to get access to? Share that with me in the comments below and let me know how you're developing that intentional plan. And that's going to move us to strategy number three. Okay, educational leadership strategy number three. Investing in yourself. And investing in yourself is leveraging your natural gifts and your natural talents. It's leveraging your Clifton strengths. Now, as a certified strengths coach through Gallup, I can tell you that when you know and you're able to expand and deepen your knowledge about your skills about your natural talents, it's a force multiplier for your ability to execute at higher levels. It's a force multiplier of your ability to be able to influence and impact more people, more communities. But it's this deep reflective look at who we are and what we bring to the table. Too often, we don't invest enough in ourselves. But when you know your Clifton strengths, and when you make a commitment to investing in them, 
you can go further a lot faster because now you're operating at your highest level. Now you can operate at your highest capacity because once you understand what those strengths are and you begin to invest in them, you're going to be more productive. You're going to be more energetic. You're going to be more connected. You're going to be more engaged. And for all of those reasons, that's exactly what our teams need from us. They need us to come with that energy. They need us to come with that laser-like focus. And we can come in with that energy and that laser-like focus when we know that we're operating using our strengths, the talents that we've been given, our sweet spot, when we can operate in flow. That's what investing in our strengths and investing in ourselves can bring for us. When we can layer all three of these strategies together, now we have the opportunity to build on our capacity. Now we have the opportunity to execute at a very, very high level and be productive and get better outcomes for students, better outcomes for our staffs, better outcomes for our school communities. So if you want to know more about how to invest in your skills, your knowledge and your talents, check out this video here. It'll give you all the roadmap that you need to know about how important it is to invest in your strengths and to build on your educational leadership capacity. We hope that you continue to get value out of these episodes. Don't forget to check the description below for more information and check out again that video right here that's going to help you expand your information and your knowledge around Clifton Strengths. And we're going to see you on the next one. Be well, everyone. Thanks.